Well, grace, peace, and mercy to all of you this Sunday morning. Um, like I said, on Wednesday, I was going to put up a, a short Advent worship experience for us. Since we're not gathering this morning for our, our normal kind of worship time, I wanted us to be able to capture that you know, fourth week of Advent energy to kind of carry it into our Christmas Eve celebration and service tonight. And so I have put this short, a little bit longer than our normal devotional uh, video, but this short worship experience for you. We're going to have some music. I will share a reading. I will preach to you. And then we'll say a blessing and we will carry that energy we gain from this time together and bring it. Uh, hopefully all of you will come tonight to, to our five o'clock service in person, but you can also you know, participate online. Well, we're going to begin this time together with the first two verses of the hymn, Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming. Reading from the Gospel of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And Gabriel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. Well, have you ever been accused of playing favorites? You know, perhaps at home by your kids or at work, at school. Or maybe you have accused someone of playing favorites in those same places and spaces. Well, I want you to kind of think about why you felt that way. And what was it that made you feel as if someone was playing Favorites, or why would you accuse someone of playing favorites? I mean, think about that for a moment. 
And what if I were to, to guess what you felt was that you felt you deserved the attention. That the one who was being favored, you deserved what they were receiving. Which, when you think about it, is like this surface kind of feeling that someone else is getting the attention because really at its core, that feeling, it's rooted in our own sense of importance, right? our value, our desire to be noticed, to have the sense that someone else is glad that, that we are there. Which is why I think it's really important to, to pay attention to the way favor is playing out in this reading from Luke that I shared with you. In the reading, the very first words out of the mouth of the angel are, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. It's a message that we hear Mary is perplexed by, and why wouldn't she be? After all, she's just a normal young girl from a little village no one's ever heard of and couldn't find on a map. I mean, there's nothing spectacular about her. I mean, no great works or deeds, no lives saved, no uh, charities founded. It's no wonder that she's perplexed by this favor. I mean, Mary's life circumstances would reasonably have caused her just to question, am I favored? I mean, is God really with me? What does this favor entail? Probably thinking to herself, I'm nobody special. I think... Mary's initial reluctance, her initial confusion to being favored, what well, stems from the message she has heard and likely absorbed from her own society that as an unwed teenage girl, she had no power, no privileges, no voice. Which leads us then to the most important question. Why would God look upon her with favor? Why would God essentially say, well, I am glad you're here, Mary. Well, from one perspective, the world's perspective, it seems like this story is backwards. She should receive God's favor after she's agreed to do what God asks. Right? When God gets what God wants, then Mary would get God's favor. But it doesn't happen that way because it can't happen that way. Well, God's favor, right? it's not something that is earned or deserved. It's a gift. Much like us, you know, giving gifts to children, grandchildren, friends, family at Christmas. Right? We give those gifts not because someone deserved it. We give the gift not because of what someone has done. We give the gift because of who that person is to us. Someone special. Whom we deeply love and, and care about. And that is why God favors Mary. Not for what she's done. Not because the hierarchy, the norms and standards of the society... And the world have established for those who deserve favor. But because of who and who she is, God bestows their favor, their grace upon her. Because it reflects who God is. Which makes me think about all the Marys in our world. All those beautiful people, you know, beautiful to God people. Who have essentially been told that they, you know, were not wanted here or or others, or that others were, were glad that they were not there. The messages of society that have deemed people unworthy, undeserving of favor because of who they are or aren't, because of where they are or not from. I mean, the messages that so many Marys, so many people, have unfortunately internalized to their own harm, their own hurt, their own detriment. And I don't know. Maybe you are. A Mary, as someone who has been told by others that you're not worth it, that you're not welcome. But I want you to listen closely and carefully to this promise today, a promise that God reveals to us in God saying yes to Mary. You are welcome. You are worth it. God is glad you are here. Because for God, all are welcome, all are worth it. God is glad all are are here. So did you hear that? And do you believe it? Do you trust that God's message of favor has been spoken to you and to me as well? I mean, do we get it that like Mary, God is promising to do seemingly impossible things through each of us? <clears throat> like Mary, I wonder 
You know, if at times we don't also tend to hear this message from God and, and find ourselves in disbelief, wondering how this can be. How can this be that I found favor with God? How can this be that God would do something impossible through me? How can this be? I mean, after all, we know so well our own inadequacies, our own failures, our own mistakes. And it's true. That all of us have lived lives at times that are less than, you know, what God hopes for. And so knowing that can leave us each kind of wondering, really me, worthy? I mean, how could God work through someone like me? But again, God's favor. It's not something we can earn. It's not something we deserve any more than anyone else. Unlike most of us where we believe we have to work ourselves into another's favor, into another's good graces, God's favor is a gift. A gift that God freely gives to Mary. A gift that God freely gives to you and to me. You see, through Christ. So the child of Mary and the Holy Spirit, each one of us has been approved already by God, chosen by God, called by God, and gifted with favor. Gifted with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ, God places us within the grasp of their good graces forever, regardless of who we think we are or aren't. Or whether we think we belong or think we don't. God, through Christ, favors us in two. And it's this gracious gift and promise that eventually moves Mary. That moves her from peasant girl to prophet, from Mary to mother of God, from doubt and possible denial to discipleship. It is God's grace that enables Mary to risk everything and trust in God, putting her very life on the line to carry this child of God, this Savior of the world, and just as it does for all of us. It is God's grace. It's God's grace that moves us from who we think we are to what God calls us to be. It's God's grace that overcomes our fears and our, our reservations and empowers us to be bearers of Jesus in the world. You see, you and me, we like Mary, we are pregnant, pregnant with God's promises, pregnant with God's hope, pregnant with God's spirit, pregnant with God's grace. And God calls us to give birth to these gifts in our lives for the sake of others. God calls us to share, reflect, and point to their everlasting light and life in this world. A world so very broken and, and in desperate need of new life. Called to seek to transform the world, aligning it with God's vision that Mary describes in the words of the Magnificat. A world where the powerful are brought down and the lowly are lifted. Where the hungry are filled with good things and the rich, they are sent away empty. This is the work that God calls us to, the hard and difficult work of birthing God's kingdom into the world, proclaiming the good news of redeeming grace in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And like the angel Gabriel, like young Mary, called to proclaim God's favor for us and for all of creation, called to say to all the world, God is glad you're here. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We're going to continue with uh, verses 3 and 4 of Lo, How a Rose Air Blooming.
Well, I'm going to bring our short Advent worship together to a close by offering you all this blessing on this Christmas Eve. May the God of peace bless you. The love of Christ sustain you in hope. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit remain upon you now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today, uh, this morning. I hope uh, that you have the opportunity tonight to either be with us in person or to enjoy a Christmas Eve worship experience on our YouTube channel. Either way, God loves that you are there. Well, thank you. God bless you all, and perhaps I'll see you tonight.